Monday to you. Welcome back to the front porch. It's time once again for another episode of Monday Meditations. Grab your Bibles open to Proverbs chapter 19. Today we're going to be looking at verses 20 through the end of the chapter, focusing on the idea of the counsel of God. We need counsel. We need direction in our lives. The way There's a way that seems right to a man, but then there are the ways of death. And, and Jeremiah would say long ago, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It's not in man that walks to direct his own steps. So we need that direction that counsel from God. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. We have to be taught of God. Every man therefore hath heard and hath learned of the Father comes unto me. That's why it's important to study our Bibles, to focus on what God's Word has to say. The wise man understood that by inspiration, of course, and experience in his own life as well. And he would pass that along to the next generation as he passes it on to us today. So let's focus on meditate upon the counsel of God as we read Proverbs chapter 19 starting with verse 20. He says, Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. The fool's way seems right in his own eyes of what he wants to do uh, is what he uses as his guide. But that's a fool who trusts what's what he sees, what he wants to be right instead of what God says to be right. Chapter 12 verse 15 makes that statement as well as we noted earlier in one of our studies but he says here that focus on listen to the counsel but also receive that instruction when you hear that counsel do something with it receive it that you may be wise in the latter end this is something that will will carry on in the future it's something that protects our future and prepares us for the future as well it's something lasting he says in verse 21 there are many devices in a man's heart nevertheless the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. There are many things that we desire, many things that we think about in our lives. We'd like to have this, we'd like to have that. Many of those things come to naught. Many of those things won't last. But he says in the latter part of this, the counsel of the Lord, that's why we should seek it, because it's going to stand. It's it's from God. It's on a higher level. And so when we trust that counsel, we and receive that instruction. And we're going to stand. We're going to be able to, to trust in that. Trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not to our own understandings. And all our ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct our paths. Verse 22 says, The desire of a man is his kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. There are the, Kindness is not the only attribute that makes one valuable. But it's something that is desired. To have kindness, to be a person who is kind, to show kindness to others... It's one of the blessings that God gives to us. When you think about mercy, you think about grace, kindness is involved in that. It doesn't cost anything to be kind, but the rewards are, are eternal. It's a blessing for us to show kindness to one another. As you see in this passage, the desire of man is his kindness. It makes one desirable when they're a kind person. That's what we should be. He also says a poor man, though, is better than a liar. To hold on to one's integrity is better than to have riches and the loss of those integ of the integrity. We don't we don't like the idea of being poor. Who wants to be poor? And that's that's not the point. But it's better to be that than to be that of a liar. Revelation twenty one verse eight says that all liars will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. That second death. We don't want that for our our future. We don't want that for anyone else. So let's practice this kindness that he's talking about. It's part of that counsel from God. Verse number 23 says, The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. The fear of the Lord leads to the result of that life. Having that reverence and respect for God, trusting in Him and, and putting our cares upon Him, all of those things that are involved in fearing and respecting and reverencing God, it leads to life. A life eternal is what we're talking about in this, and he says, "He that he says it shall, that he that hath it shall abide satisfied, having that content life, the peace." How when we look back to the first century church and the Christians who were persecuted, how could they stand so boldly and proclaim God's message, knowing that they were going to be put in prison or put to death, even, or even as Stephen in Acts chapter seven is being stoned to death and. He, he prays for his murderers. 
How do they have such confidence? How do they have such faith? Because they have the fear of the Lord, first and foremost. In chapter 18, verse 10, it says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. We talked about that not too long ago. We trust in God. He's our fortress. He's our protection. The satisfaction that he's talking about is a life lived in faithful service to God. We want for nothing. Oh, it doesn't mean we're going to have every uh, comfort, creature comfort in this world. But we have a hope of an eternal life with him where there will be no more suffering. He'll wipe away every tear from the eye. And we have that peace forevermore with him. He says in the last part of verse 23, He shall not be visited with evil. Again, it's emphasizing God's going to take care of us. He's going to protect us. In the model prayer, deliver us from temptation, we pray. That's the idea as well. Looking to God to keep us, to protect us, to hold us in the hollow of His hand. Doing so as we apply the word to our lives. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119 verse 11. Verse 24 then says, A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. The He's being a little sarcastic in this statement uh, to make a point. It's a little hyperbole in this as well. He thrusts or hideth his hand in his bosom, or some translations have his bowl. He shoves his hand, buries his hand, as it were, in his bowl of food, but he's so lazy, slothful, he won't even bring his hand to his mouth to feed himself. He's expecting the food just to fall in his mouth. This is how lazy this slothful man is and how wicked that looks and how sad that condition is, expecting we deserve this, we deserve that. Well, we know from the scripture we deserve death because all of sin that comes short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And that's why we should we do our part, do what God created us to do, and that's to fear him and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Verse 25 says, smite a scorner and the simple will beware and reprove one that hath understanding and he will understand knowledge. You want to sum up verse 25, it means this, discipline works. Corrective discipline works. When you smite the scorner, the one who's mocking the simple, yeah, they're, going, they're going to see you don't do that. That's the end result. If you reprove one who has understanding, he's going to under, the one who has understanding, he's going to gain knowledge from that. Those who have understanding, those who have wisdom, they're going to see that doesn't work. This is the end result. When we let people go without punishment, people think they can get away with the crime. That's a simple fact we see in society even today. God will punish those who choose to be slothful, as he said earlier, who choose not to listen to counsel, who choose to be a scorner, who choose to be those who have no understanding and lack of wisdom. Let's, let's use that discipline as God would have us, in love, of course, to correct and, and keep others from following suit and doing the same things. Punishment's real. Judgment is coming. And God will be just in his judgment. His grace, his mercy, that doesn't diminish that. That is real. But it's for those who are in Christ, those who repent, and those who choose not to, all they have to look forward to is fiery indignation, punishment from God. You remember Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, if we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge of truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. But that certain fearful looking for that judgment of God, that fiery indignation we're talking about. So let's choose life. Let's make sure we reprove. Preach the truth, yes, in love, but make sure we reprove and stay as far away from sin as possible, listening to the counsel of the Lord. Verse 26 says, He that wasteth his father, or abuses him, and chaseth away his mother, is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach. This is the same idea goes back to the, the Ten Commandments, honor thy father and thy mother, as was repeated in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land. That's the first command with promise, that your days would be long in the land. Honor father and mother. This son that he's talking about, this child that he's talking about here, that wastes his father, abuses and rejects 
the counsel of his father, chases away his mother. He's one who causes shame and he brings reproach upon the family and upon his own name, upon himself. Don't be that person. So he says then in verse 27, Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. There's two different uh, views of, of how to interpret this, but it seems pretty common sense if you look at it. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causes to err. Don't listen to the instruction to sin, to turn away from the words of knowledge. Don't listen to that kind of counsel. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Psalm 1 we've mentioned many times. Blessed is the man who doesn't do these things. And so that counsel that he's talking about is an evil counsel. Don't listen to that. Others find counsel to be this idea of, of don't listen to this counsel in a sense that you're just going to reject it. It seems pretty cut and dry to me, though, as you look at this verse, cease to hear the instruction that causes one to err or to, to fall short or to come away from, turn away from, that is, the this instruction that he's talking about, this words of knowledge, the counsel of God. We need to be listening to the word of God, not turning from it, not listening to those who would pull us away from it, but listening to those who would help encourage us to stay true to the word of God. Verse 28 says, an ungodly witness scorneth judgment and the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. An ungodly wit, a, a worthless witness, he scoffs at, he scorns, he mocks the judgment of God doesn't find any fear whatsoever in standing before an almighty God. He mocks that judgment of him saying you're a sinner or him saying depart from me. I never knew you. He mocks those things. That's this ungodly witness. But he also says the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. Finds his pleasure and loves iniquity. Just looking for it and sits around thinking about what can I do that's wrong. That's his passion. That's that person's desire. They devour it, just like something that was a, a delicacy that you couldn't stand not to eat. That's how they view this wickedness, this iniquity, this lawlessness. Verse 29 says, Judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. God is serious about judgment. He's serious about salvation as well. That's another part of judgment. Being judged righteous is still judgment. Being judged wicked is destruction. We're told this from the words of Jesus himself in John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming which, in which all that are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. They that have done good to the resurrection of life. The beautiful day that's going to be. They that have done evil to the resurrection of damnation, destruction. As he says, judgments are prepared. They're ready for those who are scorners, those who mock the truth. And stripes, severe lashing and punishment for the backs of fools. Let's listen to the counsel of God. Hear his counsel. Hear his opportunity that he's put before us and his grace and his mercy for us to come to him and receive that eternal life that he promises us through Jesus Christ, his son. If we can help in any way, let us know. Reach out. What can we do to assist in listening to the counsel of God so that one day we can hear the words of God say, well done, good and faithful servant. And that's something on which we can meditate this Monday and every day. May God bless you till we meet again.